we know that during execution each process is allocated some memory space so like p1 would be given some memory there would be some memory addresses allocated to p2 and each process can access only the memory addresses that have been allocated to it there is no way in which a process can view or access the address space or the data of any other process but suppose if two processes want to communicate then how will they do so so this is the topic for this video inter process communication why the processes need to communicate and how they can do so so first of all let us see what are the advantages of inter process communication first is information sharing there might be several processes who would want to share some some information like two processes would be sharing a file one process might be writing into that file other process might be reading from that file or several processes they are sharing the same database so how can this information sharing be done secondly an application can be developed as separate modules this becomes convenient for the developers to build that application now these modules they might want to communicate with each other third is computation speed up when a particular task it can it has been broken down into several sub tasks and these sub tasks they can run concurrently now these different modules they might need to share data or communicate with each other so this all of this are the advantages of inter process communication and the reason why we have to develop various methods for the different modules or processes to share information so there are three main models of ipc one is shared memory then message passing third is signals there are few others so first let us take a look at what is the shared memory uh, technique of inter process communication here one process let us say process a it will create an area in its own address space so this will be the area of shared memory in the address space of one process now the other process which wants to communicate it will attach this shared memory segment to its own address space and now both processes they will use the shared shared memory like a regular memory segment and they will exchange data and information by reading or writing from that memory segment now the communication over here is under the control of the user processes because these process the one that is creating this shared memory segment and the other process which is attaching this shared memory segment they are both user processes so they this control of this shared memory segment is under the control of the user processes so the advantage is that it is fast but the only limitation is now there has to be some mechanism for the user processes to synchronize when they access this shared memory so if this shared memory act is being accessed by process a then process b should not be accessing the that same segment at that time if process b is accessing then process a should not be accessing so there has to be some mechanism for synchronization the shared memory how it is uh, created in uh, linux so there are few basic commands for this one is the shared memory get this command it creates a shared memory segment so suppose if process a wants to create a shared memory it in its own address space it will use this command there are three key parameters over here a uh, key is the identifier of the uh, the memory segment that is created the size is what size of the shared memory the process wants to create and the flags they define the shared memory options this command will return an id of this segment and this id is referred to as the shared memory id now if process b 
wants to attach this shared memory which has been created by process A to its own address space, it will use this command shared memory attach. So this will attach the shared memory and the ID of the shared memory which was created, it will have to be passed as a parameter over here. And this address, it will be the pointer to the memory address space of the calling process. So here process B is the calling process. Process B wants to attach this shared memory. So it will have to give a pointer of its own memory address space. And again, the flags, they define some sharing options. Now, if the communication is over and the, uh, this shared memory segment has to be detached, so this command can be used by process A now, which was the one which created the uh, shared memory. So, uh, shared memory detach. So, here the shared memory will be detached. The other technique of uh, inter-process communication is message passing. In this technique, the shared memory is not created in the address space of the user. It is created in the address space of the kernel. So here the shared memory has been created and so there can be a message queue. So the processes which need to communicate can use this shared memory space within the kernel address space for communication. So suppose if process B wants to send some message to process A. So process B will write into this shared memory space and it can use this system called send A message. That means it wants to send a message to process A. And now the kernel will send some kind of signal to process A. So process A will use this command receive B message that means receive a message from process B and this message which was available in the kernel space will be available to process A now. Here you can see that this shared memory is being managed by the kernel. So there is explicit sharing and so it will be less error prone as it is being managed by the operating system. The only limitation over here is that it is slow because now there are system calls that are involved and every time there has to be a, um, a request to the operating system to send or receive messages. The third way of inter-process communication is by use of signals. These signals can notify a process that some event has occurred and this signal will be then delivered to the process once a signal has been delivered to a process, the signal must be handled by the process. So uh, examples of uh, signals can be synchronous signals or asynchronous. In synchronous signals, uh, if there is an illegal memory access by a process, so the operating system will send a signal to the process. If there is a divide by zero, again the OS will send a signal to the process. Now here the signal is delivered to the same running process which caused the event. So the process which caused these events, illegal memory access or divide by zero. So the signal will be sent to the same process because this process caused the event. So this is referred to as a synchronous signal. A synchronous signal are signals generated by an event which is external to a running process. So one process was running, but some other uh, event happened and because of that external event, now, this, now the signal will be sent to this running process. So the running process did not cause that event. It was caused by some external event, like the parent might want to terminate the child. So if the parent wants to terminate the child, it is a, an event which is being caused by the parent. But now this signal is being sent to the child. So this is an asynchronous signal. And once the process receives the signal, it will have to handle it. Now uh, we can have some certain commands which are used in Unix for signal. So like for delivering a signal, there is the kill command. Kill 
this is the PID of the process, it is of PID type and some number of the signal which will be provided as a parameter for delivering this signal. So, this will specify what kind of signal is being delivered. Each process can create a, pro a handler for handling that signal. So, a signal can be handled by a signal handler and this signal signum will be the kind of signal that has to be handled and the handler will be the pointer to the memory address where that process where that module or function of handling the signal is specified. So, this will be giving the address the memory pointer of the signal handler and if there is no signal handler that is defined then whatever is the default defined by the operating system that signal handler would be used. <laughs>